it is great wisdom not to be rash in our doings, nor to maintain too obstinately our own opinion. The Imitation of Christ. Brethren in Christ, love day to Jesus Christus in secula. This is Timothy Flanders at the Union of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to another edition of The Imitation of Christ. We're now on chapter four, which is of book one. We're reading this every single week as a way to promote spiritual reading. This is one of the best ways to deal with the crisis in the church. If you're uh, tired of reading the news and you're, you've grown weary of what's going on in the world or in the church, pick up a copy of The Imitation of Christ. This book is said to be the most popular book besides the Bible, and for good reason, because as we read through it, you'll see that this is a spiritual kick in the gut or kick in the teeth or whatever motivates you and exhorts you to the spiritual life. This text has inspired countless saints to achieve holiness, and it is something that we really need to be focusing on as our world becomes more and more focused on things that we can't control. This is focusing on things that you can control, things that is is your responsibility, which is saving your own soul and the souls of your spouse and children. So we'll get into our topic in just a minute. Just want to remind everybody, we do need your support at the online guild. This is a lay apostolate. This is a collaborative effort between various people, and the guild helps to support the keeping of this whole thing to be free for everybody um, so that we can produce it and give give all this content out to people. Um, but we do need your support. The online guild supports this lay apostolate. Uh, we do have a book coming out. Uh, we have independent um, business contracts, if you will, with various authors and uh, contributors. One of them is my friend, my Matthew Pleasy. He is one of my favorite Catholic writers because uh, just like what I'm trying to do here, he really stays away from controversy and just sticks to the Catholic doctrine and customs. And I always learn something from Matthew Pleasy when I write or when I read his his uh, his writings. Um, and he has a book coming out called The Roman Catechism Explained for the Modern World. This text is it's uh, a very, very good text. Uh, I'm still going through it because I have to publish it. Um, and it is an explanation of the classic catechism, which is known as the Roman Catechism. If you've never heard of that, that's the, the Catechism of the Council of Trent, which is known as the Roman Catechism or the Tridentine Catechism. And um, there, there was uh, around the year 1900, there was a, uh, a, do a, a book called The Roman Catechism Explained, and that was in 1900. And so this is a this is another book kind of in the same tradition of taking that 16th century catechism and then explaining that for the modern world. And so this this text is is very, very good. I'm really excited about it. So you can be a part of the launch team. Uh, you can get this book advanced copy for free if you're a member of the guild. So you can sign up at patreon.com slash meaning of Catholic. And as always, this is a guild. So the purpose is to for uh, Catholics to support one another. So, you know, if you're poor, you can't, you know, you can't afford it at this time, can't afford to be a part of the guild, you can always join for free. Just contact us at uh, meaningofcatholic.com slash contact. So welcome uh, everybody in the chat, Katie, Elba, Sean. Um, all right, let's get to our chapter here. The great thing about the meaning of imitation of Christ is all the chapters are very short. This week we have another a shorter chapter last week was a little bit longer. <clears throat> so chapter four, book one, chapter four. Prudence in what we do. We must not be easy in giving credit to every word and suggestion, but carefully and leisurely weigh the matter according to God. Alas, such is our weakness that we often more readily believe and speak of another, that which is evil than that which is good. But perfect men do not easily give credit to every report because they know men's weaknesses, which is very prone to evil and very subject to f fail in words. 
It is great was wisdom not to be rash in our doings, nor to maintain too obstinately our own opinion. Nor should we believe every man's word, nor presently tell others the things which we have heard or believed. Consult with a, with a wise and conscientious man, and seek rather to be instructed by one who is better than to follow thine own inventions. A good life makes a man wise according to God and expert in many things. The more humble a man is in himself and more subject to God, the more wise will he be in all things and the more at peace. End of chapter four. I think this chapter has a lot of great content for our day. Uh, as always, um, I love what he says in the first line. We should not give credit to every word and suggestion, but carefully and leisurely weigh the matter before God. I was just discussing with a friend of mine um, when we're, dealing with uh, all the controversies in the 20th century Catholic church. And, um, <clears throat> and even in, even in the 19th century, there is this great desire to paint a black and white picture of everybody involved in uh, every different happening in, in the 20th century. So I think in particular of uh, we've talked about Archbishop Lefebvre and John Paul II. For example, recently on the Guild stream, um, there is a lot of vilification of John Paul II by trads, for example, or non-trads may sometimes vilify Archbishop Lefebvre. And this goes for very, many different figures of the 20th century, where we really want to have this black and white picture of people. We want a, a person to kind of we want to know who the good guys are and know who the bad guys are. And that's just a very immature way of looking at people. Uh, I, this is, I mean, this is how I talk to my kids. I talk about the bad guys, you know, but they don't understand that bad guys, even bad guys are complex. You know, even the people who are evil are on the evil side of things are complex people. And they can sometimes do a right thing even though they're, they're sort of living a life of sin. Um, and I think that what he brings out is so important um, because we often want to follow a narrative. We want a, a, a ready package narrative about what's going on in the world. And then we want to just find good guys and bad guys. I think a gr another great example is the Ukraine crisis. Um, I, I, I've been saddened, saddened at how, quickly Catholics got into a, a very simplified narrative of what's going on uh, and really took very strong stances against each other, you know, within a month of a, of a, of an international uh, conflict. I, I couldn't believe how quickly people were taking sides on this. And as I looked more and more into it, I saw that there was, so many different sides and different angles of this whole thing that it's such a complex thing that you know this is this is why we should carefully weigh the words of everybody and really look at and know that people are prone to evil people are prone to simplify and oversimplify and create a narrative as to what this or that thing is going on or this or that thing in history you know this is something that i've also been reading about is is the post-war narrative so World War II, we're still living in the we're still living in a post-war narrative world where we um, we were just um, I, I was just reviewing an article that was talking about a controversy in Spain with uh, General Franco and his uh, the they have the the cross in Spain, which is the um, the largest cross in the world for the Valley of the Fallen, which is where Franco buried those who died in the Spanish Civil War on both sides as a way to attempt to reconcile the country. And, um, at, you know, in the post-war narrative, we basically have Franco as bad because he was on the wrong side of the Spanish Civil War or the wrong side of World War II. You know, Anglos have this opinion, for example, of Franco or, or of other World War II figures. You know, the Allies were good, the Axis were bad. Um, and we still live in this narrative to this day. Um, and there's so many different things that are more complex than we realize. And so 
I, I love what he's saying to really weigh these things carefully. And ultimately, uh, we should, it, it is his great wisdom not to be rash in our doings. As I grow older, I, I find that I just can't have these strong opinions anymore because the world is so much more complex than I realized when I was younger. You know, when I was a young man, I had these strong opinions about X, Y, Z, this and that thing. But realize, wow, when I really study this thing, it becomes more and more and more complex. And there's so many different sides of this thing. So how can I optionally, obstinately hold my own opinion about something? You know, and that goes for the different controversies in the church. Obviously, I'm a writer. I'm putting forth my own opinion about the causes and the effects and, and the solutions for the current crisis in the church. But I, I don't, this is just a hypothesis. You know, I should, I should be very uh, light with this holding this opinion and say, well, I, here's my hypothesis. I could be wrong. You know, I'm just trying to contribute to a solution that we can all work together and converse and debate and figure these things out. And so that, that's what Meaning of Catholic is all about. We're trying to really put this into practice. We're trying to say, Hey, there's Catholics with different opinions, both theological or controversial or political or economic, whatever. And we're trying to promote the fact, the meaning of Catholic, the meaning of Catholic in the sense of the Catholic dogmas, the Catholic essentials that we all have to agree and assent to for our own salvation. And then these other matters, which are le less uh, on a spectrum of essential, you know, from non-essential or even debatable licit opinions and we're trying to promote that meaning of catholic because that is really the reality of what catholicism is it is the true unity in diversity that's what catholicism is it's the true unity in diversity not as the world sees it because the 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 world sees it as um diversity without truth but the catholic church says it it is unity in truth and things that we are not certain about are being discussed and resolved god willing depending on the severity and the urgency of the question and so we are seeking the splendor of truth in the catholic church and the catholic church is transmitting that splendor of truth so that's all we have this 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 week. I think there's a, some great wisdom from Thomas Akempis this week from the Imitation of Christ. So do not be rash in your judgments. That's uh, very very great wisdom. May we all put this into practice this week. Uh, this uh, Wednesday today is Wednesday. It's a day of penance for the Fellowship of Saint Anthony. Um, this is a lay sodality that we're promoting to uh, offer penance on um, this during the time after Pentecost. It's uh, Wednesday and Friday. And uh, we're offering penance for clergy and seminarians. So if you'd like to join us in that lay sedality, uh, you can contact me at meaningofcatholic.com slash contact. Let's pray. In nomine patri, sit fili, spiritu sancti, amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, dominus tecum, benedicta tuum liarbus, et benedictus frutus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre, amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, pray for us. Saint Anthony of the desert, pray for us. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Jesus is King. Amen.